Welcome to the lush world of banana farming. In this fascinating video journey, we delve into the fascinating process of growing and harvesting bananas. Join us as we explore the intricate steps involved in cultivating these beloved tropical fruits. From the initial planting of seedlings to a bountiful harvest, the process of growing bananas begins with young plants being cultured in a nursery. Can also be planted with healthy banana trees, well-developed roots and sturdy stems. Bananas thrive in warm, tropical climates with well-drained soil and plenty of sunlight. Dig a hole large enough to accommodate the banana plant's roots. Place the seedling in the hole and cover with soil, making sure the tree is at the same depth as when it was in the nursery. Depending on the variety, plant banana plants 6 to 10 feet apart for proper growth and air circulation. This prevents overcrowding and reduces the risk of disease. Bananas need regular watering, especially during dry periods. They may need watering several times a week. Adjust frequency based on weather conditions and soil moisture holding capacity. Although bananas need steady humidity, it is essential to avoid overwatering. Waterlogged soil can lead to root rot and other fungal diseases. Regularly remove dead or damaged leaves to promote healthy growth. Bananas are heavy eaters and benefit from regular fertilization. Weeds compete with banana plants for nutrients and water, and they can also harbor pests and diseases that can harm banana plants. Clearing weeds reduces competition, allowing banana plants to thrive unhindered. Pest populations of banana plants include species such as nematodes, weevils, aphids, and mites. Nowadays, aerial spraying is very popular. Cover large areas of agricultural land quickly and effectively. This method is especially beneficial for large-scale farms, where manual pesticide application would be time-consuming and labor-intensive. When the banana tree reaches a certain level of maturity, usually about 9 to 15 months after planting, it will begin the flowering process. Farmers cover specially developed permeable bags to let in light and air but keep out pests, wind and weather. When the protective leaves turn darker, at this stage some of the flowers are carefully removed with scissors or by hand. This helps the plant be able to absorb more nutrients so that the bananas are large and uniform in size.
From the time banana flowers appear until ripe fruit is harvested, it takes about 75 to 150 days. Bananas are usually harvested when they are not fully ripe and still firm. Experienced farmers will look at the size of bananas to determine their readiness for harvest. Protective foam cushions are inserted between the banana arms to prevent falls and damage. When they arrive at the processing site, they are cleaned and carefully cleaned. Processed banana products are packaged into cartons for retail sale or distribution to food manufacturers. Now let's see how the factory makes dried bananas. Bananas are an incredibly versatile fruit with many uses in cooking, baking, and more. We have explored the fascinating journey of growing, harvesting, and processing bananas. From the lush tropical plantations where these iconic fruits thrive, to the careful farming practices that ensure their optimal growth, with advanced processing techniques, they I witnessed the process of turning raw bananas into a wide variety of products. Join us in celebrating the incredible world of banana growing, where passion, ingenuity, and nature's generosity come together to bring us the bananas we know and love. Goodbye, and see you again in the next videos. Hi, everybody. Today, we will embark on a journey together to explore the world of one of the most popular drinks, coffee. But it's not just any ordinary coffee. We're going straight to Brazil, the number one coffee producing country in the world. Did you know, Brazil has more than 18 billion coffee trees and 8 million farmers who are dedicating every day to bringing us delicious cups of coffee? Brazil is not only the world's largest coffee producer, but is also famous for Arabica coffee, which is delicious and much more expensive than other types. Do you know why Arabica coffee is so special? That's because it only grows in highland areas with altitudes between 1,000 and 2,000 meters above sea level. And today, we will step into a typical coffee farm to understand the process of growing and caring for this top-notch coffee. Soil preparation is the first and most important step in this process. Farmers plow fields and level the land to ensure that coffee trees can grow in the best way. After the land is ready, healthy, pest-free coffee seedlings will be transferred to the field for planting. Coffee-growing soil needs a pH of 5.5.
6.5 loose, rich in nutrients and well-drained, these farmers will plant about 2,000 coffee trees per hectare. In 2023, the total area devoted to coffee cultivation in Brazil will be about 2.51 million hectares. Coffee growing regions in Brazil mainly include the southeastern states, with Minas Gerais being the largest producer. Growing coffee isn't just about planting seeds and hoping for the best. Coffee plants need meticulous care in each stage of development. From watering and fertilizing to pest control, everything is precisely calculated so that plants grow healthily and produce high yields. After a few years, when the coffee tree reaches maturity, pruning becomes extremely important. Farmers will prune unnecessary branches, preventing the tree from growing too tall and helping the tree focus on producing fruit. This also makes the harvesting process easier later. Did you know that each mature coffee tree can produce from one kilogram to two kilograms of coffee beans? After two to three years, the coffee tree is ready for its first harvest. Brazilian coffee trees are harvested using both methods, manually and mechanically. Each method has its own advantages, but the common point is that they all require ingenuity and meticulousness. Do you want to know how a coffee harvester works? This is how coffee harvesters work. The machines shake the trees, causing the ripe coffee beans to fall. Then the coffee beans are transferred to the coffee truck. The capacity of the coffee harvesters can harvest up to 2 to 10 tons of coffee per day. The number is really impressive, isn't it? However, to create the highest quality coffee, some farmers still choose the manual harvesting method, picking each ripe coffee bean by hand. This not only ensures the highest quality, but also produces the best coffee beans in the world. Once the coffee beans are harvested, processing begins. This is an extremely important step, determining up to 60% of the flavor of coffee beans. There are many different processing methods, but the two most popular methods are the natural process and the honey processing method. First, let's talk about natural coffee, also known as dry processed coffee, which is not only a traditional method, but also produces coffee beans with richer and more complex flavors. From sweet cherries to blueberries or strawberries, it's all condensed into each coffee bean. After harvesting, the coffee cherries are taken to the washing station. The natural process does not require the coffee cherries to be peeled immediately. Instead, they are kept intact and carefully classified. Only the freshest and ripest fruits are kept to ensure flavor quality. The coffee cherries are then taken to raised beds where they are dried in the sun for three to four weeks. What's special is that during this time, workers will continuously stir and sort to ensure the fruit dries evenly and is not damaged. Coffee cherries can be susceptible to mold or over-fermentation if not closely monitored. Therefore, each fruit must be carefully cared for. No detail can be overlooked. 
After the coffee cherries are completely dry and reach the ideal moisture content of about 11%, they will be transferred to the dry grinding mill. Here, the coffee cherries will be peeled using specialized machines, revealing green coffee beans, the main factor that creates the delicious cup of coffee we love. Next, let's learn how to process honeybees, different from natural processing methods. After harvesting, coffee needs to be peeled immediately, usually within 8 to 12 hours. The shelling machine will remove the outer layer, but retain all or part of the mucilage on the coffee beans. This is an important factor that makes the difference in the honey method compared to other processes. Honey coffee is classified based on the amount of mucus remaining on the beans and the way it is dried, often named by color such as yellow honey, red honey, black honey. After peeling, the coffee will be immediately sent to the drying area. Depending on the type of honey coffee and weather conditions, the drying process will be adjusted accordingly. This is the most important step in the honey coffee processing process. The honey method creates unique characteristics for each type of coffee. Yellow honey tends to be lighter with subtle fruit flavors and acidity similar to washed coffee. Red honey has a deeper fruit flavor, deeper sweetness, and a soft body. Meanwhile, black honey has strong fermented characteristics with a complex flavor similar to wine or brandy with a full body and creamy texture. Finally, the coffee beans are ready to be exported to all over the world. And here you have seen the journey of a coffee bean from the moment it is planted until it becomes a delicious cup of coffee in your hand. It's amazing, isn't it? So together, we have gone through an exciting journey from the Brazilian coffee fields to the delicate processing process. Every coffee bean is the result of hard work, patience, and love for this plant. And you, next time you drink coffee, remember the story behind each bean. If you like this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to explore more interesting journeys with me. See you in the next video.